So listen, I made a TikTok about my hippo collection yesterday. And I there was one hippo I didn't, well, there's a lot of hippos I didn't include, like a lot, a lot. But there's one particular hippo I didn't include, and people were very concerned about it. So I just want you to know that no. he's alive and well. Uh, I'm a happy hippo. Nice. <laughs> Tara. People are worried. So I just want you to know that he's okay. Tara. I cannot express to you how much I Nine. hate that thing. I, I, I don't do it that much anymore. I know. I really only bring him out on special occasions. I know, but fucking that thing. And they were very concerned. I'm so sad that Dan fixed that. Nine. <laughs> like of all the things he could have done to me. God. Nine. That's why I married him. Because he enables all my worst impulses. This week um, is one of those where everyone, everyone, every single person sent me one particular story. Yeah, I think I think I know which one because a whole bunch of people sent it to me too. We'll uh, we'll get to, that one will come in due course. Don't worry. And like, just so y'all know, while I appreciate it, I don't screen the stories before we go on air. So if you send me stories, I don't look at them because I kind of like being surprised. You like being surprised. So I'm not I'm not telling you not to send them. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I don't look at them ahead of time. Because I enjoy the spontaneity. <laughs> um, that that is that's an interesting take on it. I will say. All right. Well, let us proceed. I've got everything queued up properly here. Yeah, there it is. Damn thing. All right. <laughs> let's get the intro rolling. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little something we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And it is, of course, it is the season. You missed the start of the season last week, Tara. But it is the season. Apparently, y'all are fighting about this in, in the chat now, and really? Really? It's, it's like... It, it's like that bit in Life of Brian where they're like, follow the gourd! No, the holy sandal! It's kind of like that shit. Because um, last year I had a lot of people mad at me that we joke about it. Right? Well, fuck you. We're going to joke about it some more. If you get mad about it, you need to rethink some shit. Like, seriously, you need to rethink some shit. We have, like, like factions forming in the chat, like, burn the goat, save the goat. Is that where, are we going to start like a holy war? Yeah. Hashtag fuck the goat. That's going to be more our speed. Um, Do I get to be a cult leader finally? <laughs> yes. That's been there. like my lifelong goal, but I have ADHD and no ambition. <laughs> so it's a little hard to achieve. Uh, so it is the season, the Diablo Bloken, the, the Diablo goat, the straw goat that gets put up every year. Um, in the town of Yavla, Sweden, and for the past few decades, it has been burned to the ground for reasons that remain opaque to us. It's been burned more often than it has stood, although very strangely, since 2017. It's the Priory of Sion, because the goat is actually the Holy Grail. It's, it's been very strange. Since 2017, the goat has not been burned. Now, and what, look what has happened since then. Yeah, it could be the fact that the goat has not been burned to the, the goat hasn't burned to the ground, and that has cost us dearly as a species. It, it we have not. We could end this whole global pancetta just by burning the goat. Although, or it's either the goat hasn't been burnt, or it could be the fact that in, in 2017 uh, they put a webcam on it, so it was kind of harder for yeah. people to get away Someone with burning the goat. 
they've actually made it a felony to burn the goat. And that might be why. They gotta catch your ass. I mean, there's a webcam. I don't know. We might we might be hitting a point where we're not gonna be watching the goat anymore. We'll see how this year you goes. Put Bishop behind the webcam with a trick arrow. We'll see what happens. This this might be our definitive year for the goat. If they don't burn it. We'll see. Maybe this is this is the penultimate season of the goat watch. The goat doesn't burn, his show gets canceled. Yeah. Ah, in other <laughs> That leads. Let's talk about things that actually did burn the fuck down. Okay. This one might might affect you uh, a little. This one might be you know familiar a bit to you. You know about Saint Patrick and driving the snakes out of Ireland. Yeah. Except you know, weren't any snakes. But, no, that um, was allegory for those nasty, gross pig. Well, this was this was actual snakes. And uh, he uh, attempted to drive out the snakes, although he didn't use the power of the Lord. He used fire. Maryland Manor burns down after homeowner tries to smoke out snakes. Baltimore, a Maryland homeowner's ill-advised plan to ward off a snake infestation using smoke took a disastrous turn when he accidentally burned down their Montgomery County Manor. Firefighters were called at home on Big Woods Road, uh, found the roof had collapsed and the residents engulfed in flames. It took 75 firefighters to get the fire under control, but by that point, the home was toast. It's estimated the fire caused over $1 million in damage to the home, which Property Records Show was purchased in 2014 for $1.85 million. Fortunately, no one's at home at the time, and that's part of the problem. An investigator dis- determined the homeowner had set up hot coals in the basement to smoke out snakes that had invaded the home. And then he just went out? The coals were placed too close to the combustible items, which ignited, set the house on fire. So he set up, he tried to smoke the house out, right? He tried to fill the house with smoke so the snakes would leave. But he didn't want to stay there because the house is going to be filled with smoke, right? So who wants to stay in a house full of smoke? The snakes don't. You don't. So he left. But also, like, smoke rises. And snakes are very short. Low to the ground. Yeah, they, they don't. They're like, what's all going on up there? We're, we're down here breathing. I, I don't. But, like, not a great plan from the jump. Not a great plan from the jump. No. I... Do you know what this reminds me of? I don't know if you play any phone games. But if you play phone games, you get ads for other phone games in the mm-hmm. middle of your phone game playing. Okay, and there's okay. a whole genre of phone games that are about really melodramatic stories about people fixing up houses. <laughs> I get ads for like four different ones. It's crazy. And there's one specific one where like the whole ad is like, what should this bald man use to kill this giant spider should it be fire or acid and depending on which pin he pulls that thing might kill him and i don't like and then they all end up being candy crush match three games so i don't even know how that plays into anything (laughs) but that's what this reminds me of i'm seeing the cartoon guy in the phone game ad who's like oh no snakes what tool should he use call an exterminator a Shovel or fire? And he picks fire, and then you watch the guy die. Call an extern. Look, look, you are not qual. I am not qual. Are you a herpetologist? No, yeah. you're not qualified to deal with fucking snakes. I'm just gonna smoke. No, what are you goddamn doing? I would ne- look. I've had to do some janky self fixes for my house. Well, until we get professionally shit done, right? It works in the meanwhile, and then we get some. A guy for some shit. But I have to live here. Yeah. I've got to fucking live here. So immediately. Because that's the thing. Even if this had worked, your home is now full of smoke. And it's December. And it's Maryland, which is not warm in December. No. So it's not like you can just open all the windows for the day because you can freeze all and freeze your pipes. 
So, like, what was the fucking plan here? I don't know. Million dollar home. Yeah. Actually, almost a two million dollar home. The next one is from the Washington Post, so you know shit's fucked when it's in the Washington Post. Our shit should not be in the yeah, Washington we, Post. Our oeuvre is usually, like, local news. Yeah, if it's in the Washington Post, something done fucked up. We saw early on in the pan and pancetta, um, we saw the ads for this, and we thought, no one's actually going to do this. And then he finally fucking did it. And of course, exactly what I said was going to happen fucking happened. Italian anti-vaxxer wanted a health certificate, so he wore a fake arm to his vaccination. Oh, God. The man apparently hoped to receive a uh, health certificate, which grants freedoms to Italy, the vaccinated. Uh, incident took place in Biella. Uh, an area not far from Turin and Milan in northern Italy. The uh, president of the Piedmont region explained on a Facebook post on Friday how the unnamed individual, uh, unnamed individual tried to deceive health workers and was ultimately car caught. The fake silicone arm looked very similar to real skin. However, he said, the color and feel, quote, raised the suspicion of the health worker who asked him to show the whole arm. When I Do you think a nurse can't tell the difference between silicone and skin? <laughs> Do you think you get out of nursing school not being able to identify skin? When I uncovered the arm, I felt the skin was cold and gummy and the color was too light. Also, she couldn't find fucking veins. They, they were... Yeah. Now, bless her heart. Bless her heart. She said she initially believed the man thought to work as a dentist was an amputee and had mistakenly offered the wrong arm to her. Bless your heart, lady. To think the best of this imbecile. Like, you're very gracious, sweetheart. Bless you. But no. <laughs> and she's like, so there's... Did you say he's a dentist? Yeah, he's a dentist. I know. So there's the two of them there for this moment, this, this stupid moment where they're just looking at each other and she knows he has the fake arm for this and he knows she knows and they're just awkwardly there for a moment. To me and I look at him, he looks at me. I don't remember which Weird Al song that is. He's uh, a dentist. She said he admitted he wanted a health certificate and tried to persuade her to issue him one after she, he was found out. She's like, come on. Well, that, that you've already, this has already gotten so stupid. That was your fallback plan. Come on. Come I on. guess at that point, why the fuck not just ask? <laughs> Let me just, this man's whole job <laughs> is to be this far away from your face. With his hands in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Breathing at you. Yep. That's, that's his job. <laughs> yep. Yippers. I... So he's a dentist. I don't know how a dentist... You give injections, you fucking idiot. <sighs> You put the, 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 the fucking stuff. You have to find veins in the mouth. It works the same in other parts of the body. Yeah, but the thing, like, doctors of any type have no re fucking respect for nurses. They all think nurses are just, like, housekeeping. When really, doctors all specialize in one thing, and nurses have to know all things. Yeah. But the doctors treat them like they're fucking idiots. So he probably was like, it's just a fucking nurse. She's not going to notice. Ah, well, we have another one of these again, although this fellow takes it to a special level and we've got, we, well, we don't have video. We have audio. Um, it, it's, 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 oh, this motherfucking guy. Let's get to it because eh, so this one infuriated me in a, in a special way. 
Man in car stopped for speeding calls 911 to falsely report robbery. Now let's listen to that. All right. So first of all, let, yeah, let's just start with the 911 call. First of all, he's trying to get out of it by abusing 911. Okie dokie. Let's actually listen to the call together. Come on, fucking work. Oh, no. Doesn't want to work. Work. Here we go. Oh, yeah, hold on. I, well, my bad. I've got to fix it. Hold on. Live, everybody. Okay, there we go. Back up, and here we go. November 25th. 2021, zero hours, nine minutes, 18 seconds. 911, where is your emergency? Uh, the Speedway gas station on McCorkle Avenue. Which one? South Charleston. Which one? Uh, right off the Montrose Drive exit. Okay, what's going on there? Uh, there are currently two black guys with guns literally robbing someone in their car. Did you catch that? It's always some black guy. In, in order to get out of a speeding ticket, this dude invented black criminals. There's a storied history of white people doing that. Yep. Matthew Hammock, 27, of Charleston, was arrested Thursday after a deputy made a traffic stop on a vehicle speeding on I-64 near Mile Market 55 in South Charleston. Um, the news release said several of the occupants in the vehicle seemed drunk. The deputy returned to the cruise at request back up to watch the occupants during any roadside tests. Before the union arrives, a man called and reported that a gas station had been held up in South Charleston. There's dispatchers noted that the phone that dialed 911 to report the robbery was on I-64 near the traffic stop, not near the store that was allegedly robbed. But wait. News for, uh, when dispatchers called the phone used to dial 911, a phone in the back of the seat began ringing. The, the news release said both occupants who had been in the back seat denied it was their phone. One of the occupants offered his phone as proof. The deputy said the occupant would call the phone belonging to the other backseat occupant. The phone in the back seat began to ring again. It's not my phone. I don't know how that's happening. That's weird. That is strange. You know, there was a black guy and he ran by and threw his phone in the car. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Look. You do not. Do not. Call. Our fucking American law enforcement. And tell them somewhere a black person has done a crime. Because there's some dude just at that store getting a soda. You could fucking kill that man. Yep. Yep. Because he wants a slushy. Yep. Just take your fucking speeding ticket. For real? Well, I think part of the problem was there's a bunch of fucking drunk people in the car and maybe one of them was driving. Just dick. Fantastic, this motherfucker. Couldn't you say it was a white guy? Just, just can't you just for one time? No, no, had to invent some black. So you had to make, you had to be racist about that shit. And even without the racism, yeah, which is fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. Even if you didn't have that cherry on top of the shit Sunday, you're gonna just make a false nine one one call, which, by the way, is also illegal. Yeah, that's and on top. Yep. Divert a bunch of police to a place where there is not a problem, which mm -hmm. means all the places where there are problems are not going to get that attention. Well, depending on what kind of problems there are, maybe they don't need that attention. Let's be perfectly honest. But yeah. But like 911 is not a toy. No. No. It's, it's, not, it's not your get out of jail free car. In fact, now you've got an extra get into jail free. Yes. It can be a get into jail free car. No purchase if necessary. No $200. Yeah. All right. This next one. I have, you know, I've lived in a place in my life, mostly suburbs. 
I have never actually seen someone run out in the street going taxi, taxi. I've never seen. It. Have you? You've been like Long Island the area, closer to a large metro than I people have. People don't so much. People don't so much yell, but they'll stand like with their arm up. That's like in New York City. That's how it's done. Like you stand with your arm up. So. And then if someone else comes and stands next to you with their arm up, you get in a fight about it. So, so it's not done like this then. Woman runs onto LAX tarmac telling officers she was trying to flag down the aircraft. No, I, I don't think that's how that works. That's not how that works. Woman who ran on the tarmac, tarmac at Los Angeles International Airport was detained by police Monday. Los Angeles police statement said the woman who had a ticket was in airport terminal one when she opened a door, triggering an alarm and walked onto a ramp to the tarmac. Airline employees who witnessed the woman exiting the terminal followed security protocols and maintained visual contact until the airport police arrived. Tainer. The woman who's not been identified told officers that quote, he was trying to flag down the aircraft. <laughs> Videos taken by bystanders uh, carrying a backpack and other items in her arms um, apparently struggle with a man who's trying to direct her off the tarmac. She could be seen trying to get away from him while waving enthusiastically to several employees. <laughs> Can't hail a plane? No. <laughs> and if you miss it, like it's not like Tobey Maguire and Spider Man, where if you run fast enough, you can catch it and they'll open the doors. No. No. Like, I've. If you miss the plane, you miss the fucking plane. I wish media would get over this whole stop the plane. It. Okay. If by the time you're getting there yelling stop the plane, it's way too fucking. The plane is buttoned up, it's pressurized, they're in their slot for takeoff. They're talking also, to the tower. Like people running through airports shouting things makes everyone real twitchy these days. Yes, it does. Like that whole end of love, actually. While I love the little kid who's adorable and who's grown up very good looking, I love his whole story of like chasing down the American girl he has a crush on before she moves back to America in no airport on the planet. No. Would that kid not be like have his face mashed into the floor? I think the problem with movies like that is a, like a lot of these screenwriters grew up in like the nineties. Yeah, you could still do that shit. Like the seventies, like yeah, but now no, no. When no, you no. could watch your loved one's plane take off. Yeah, now now I can't do that shit. Yeah. You drop their ass at the curb. The minute you open the door that makes the loud noises. You in trouble. Do not fuck around. Look, I, not to date myself here, but um, I was flying in the 2000s and I had one of the first smartphones. It was a Windows smartphone. They existed, <laughs> I know. Um, it was like an H... It, it was a HTC Apache was the model. It was a very early smartphone. No one had seen the fucking things before. And I was using it as a video camera. And everybody in the fucking airport lost their shit. They called security over on me. They were like scared as fuck. They're like, what is that thing? It's a phone. Oh, what is that? What is witchcraft? Even the fucking cops were like, what is witchcraft? Are you from the future? Yeah, I know. It was, it was, it was pathetic. But Well, you rem you've all heard the story of the time I went, tried to go through the TSA forgetting that there was a trick lighter in my That's purse that gave an electrical shock. But and I was like, oh, welcome to the first day of the rest of your Gitmo. I, I, I now, now, ever since then, I, I approach the airport like, like it's, it's full of a, of a, of a strange, different, I, a, a primitive, like Ewoks, like primitive alien tribe. Like, I, I don't want to scare them. I don't want to spook them or they'll tie my ass up and I'll have to have C3PO talk them out We're of eating me. We are most paranoid. Right. In the airport. You don't want to make any sudden movements. Like, just move very slowly. <sighs> don't make any loud noises. Think of it like you're dealing with a bear. <laughs> just think of the airport as full of bears, and they're all, they've all just had meth. <laughs> and act accordingly. Just leave them be. Oh, well, I, I, it feels like meth should be involved in this next story. It wasn't. I'm just very bad judgment everywhere. Um, We've often joked on the show, in fact, Dan has often joked, with us that 
it's perfectly legal in most places to own a flamethrower. You know, in case of snakes. And you're like, well, no one. Who who in their right mind would pull out a, will get into a conflict and pull out a flamethrower of all. It's a flamethrower. Come on. Well. Men. Florida. Men. Man arrested for shooting flamethrower at his neighbors. Andre Abrams, 57. What the fuck? Okay, let's pause right there. What the fuck is your... You are almost 60 years old. You have been on this planet for over half a century. And you're... What is your ass doing with a flamethrower? Zombies? No, you don't. Like, that's a whole new level of fed the fuck up. You don't use a flamethrower on zombies because then you just have no. burning zombies. Yeah. We won't stop them. No. According to the rest report, Abrams was upset about ongoing parking issues in his neighborhood. He armed himself with the flamethrower, came out of his residence, and began spraying the flamethrower in the direction of his neighbor's vehicle. According to the rest report, the flamethrower, an XM42 light, is there is there a heavy? Wait, XM forty two light. Is there like a, 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 a like? It's like a diet version too. It's spelled L I T E. I know. Is it a lower calorie flamethrower? <laughs> is there a decaffeinated flamethrower? <laughs> it sprays out flame to twenty feet. At the time of the incident, three juveniles were sitting in the car when Abrams walked walking toward them with the flamethrower and allegedly spraying it at the car. A car with three kids in it. With three kids in it. Um, You're a bad person. Abrams reportedly stated he had ongoing issues with parking and admitted spraying the flamethrower near the car, but denied he was targeting the juveniles. This 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 is the quote. This is the one that 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 lands it. If he had wanted to burn the car, he stated, he would have. Not not helping. No. Okay, I I, I finally get to use this quote. This quote. But that's worse. You see how that's worse, right? <laughs> yes, cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Like, shit, Mac wants the flamethrower. Mac wants the what? I live in a neighborhood of pretty panicky white people. Yes, okay. Yes. They will call the fucking cops for every, like, they, they yeah. literally called the cops because they didn't recognize a car. Do you know, and I have... someone's like, my fucking friends from out of town. We haven't gotten to the point of flamethrowers yet. No, we've not. We haven't here either. Although I half of my my neighborhood is like um, Latino Spanish speaking immigrants, various places Puerto Rico and, and Mexico and places like that, and half white people, and we don't get cops through here very much, and I kind of like it that way. I have my neighbors are pretty a little bit loud on the weekend sometimes. It's okay, they're fairly decent folks. Cops just hate us because we call them for every. Oh Jesus Christ, we do. We do. And like oh. I don't. I grew up in the hood, so I don't fucking call the cops on people unless I am literally about to die. Yeah. Like, I don't just call the cops because something weird's going on. Okay. But. It's, it's time. It's time. It's, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Folks, I'm going to show you a picture before, before we get to this story, all right? And you all sent me this. I'm gonna, let's start with a picture. I'll go ahead and give Tara the link, but I'm just going to let you take in the size here, all right? On the left, you see a person's hand. In comparison to the right, that is a mortar shell. In this picture, it doesn't matter how big that person's hand is, that still gives you an idea of the circumference and length of the mortar shell. And I want to repeat this. What? I'm not seeing that picture come up on my link. No, it didn't work. I had to find it. X. I had to. It, it's oh, okay. yeah. But that is a mortar shell, and the reason I am showing you the picture of this mortar shell 
is because of what happened in Gloucest Gloucestershire. Did I say that right? I think I said uh, Gloucestershire. I think so. Gloucestershire. I think I said that right. Someone will tell us it only has like two syllables because it's fuck it. Yeah, maybe they Scott. maybe they don't want us to say it right after this one. Right. Um, it's fucking Scott. And they'll be like, oh, it's just Gloucester. Bomb disposal experts called to a hospital after patient came in with a World War II mortar stuck in rectum. Was it live? Bomb disposal experts were called to a hospital when a patient came in with an unexploded device stuck inside them. Staff were able to remove the object from the male patient before the explosive ordnance disposal team was called. We can confirm an army explosions, explosion ordnance disposal team was called out at the request of local police. Spokesperson for the hospital said, confirm, and we're here. As with any incident involving munitions, relevant safety protocols followed to ensure there was no risk to patient, staff, or visitors at any time. The Denzel Washington movie Man on Fire, it's a great movie. Fan some of his best work. It's not porn. That part of the movie where he puts a bomb up the guy's ass and starts asking him questions. That's not instructional. Like, how Just, disaffected are you? Oh, I, I've got, um, I've got, oh, God, I, I found another, another uh, article to compound this and make it worse. Because number one, I've got measurements. Uh, the length of the mortar, 170 millimeters, equivalent to 6.7 uh, inches, with a width of 57 millimeters, close to two and a quarter inches. That's some goatsy right there at that point. And here's, here's the part that, according to the source, Man was a collector of military memorabilia and somehow, quote, slipped and fell onto the round. Listen, uh, nobody at the ER believes that. Nobody has ever slipped and fell on something that wound up jammed up their asshole. I'm just going to say. If you are able to slip and fall. Onto an object six and three quarters inches long, two and a quarter inches wide, and your anus just absorbs it. You have larger problems. That's a medical condition. But also, just think about the physics of it, because chances are this thing doesn't stand on end normally, right? <laughs> oh, no. so it's a length. The physics of surface area do not support that, okay? So, one, it has to be sitting in a completely unnatural position. Two, you got to be walking around with no pants on, which, yeah, I know people do. Maybe your shirt cocking it around your house. I don't know your life. <laughs> and then you have to fall straight downward in the exact Bye. We're like That's Willem Dafoe trying to reconstruct this shit in the fucking Poondock Saints. Like 99.99999% of the time, even if that ridiculous series of events occurs, you're just going to knock it over. The odds of the, all of that conflating, nobody believes you. Just tell them you shoved it up your ass because you're an idiot. Right? They all know. Like, the, what's for certain? Your, your farts will never make noise again. Ever. You don't need a high fiber diet either. Like, it's just. You can just live on bacon and cheese if you want. 
And and really, it, I want you know how you know how sometimes forensics teams will do like little computer animations and reconstruct a crime. <laughs> I want the forensic computer animation of how this happened. I want the little cartoon of the guy falling and impaling himself on a mortar. What in the world? All right, let, let's get this guy is, this is fucking a bomb. Why? It's a bomb. Of all the places I could, I would, you're right next to all of the, the fun parts. Because there's the prostate right there. There's the dangly bits. There's the, all of it's right there. And you're putting a bomb right next to it. Everything. You're, you're just. Like how, how like fight club disaffected do you have to be? <laughs> That the only way you can get off is shoving a live ordinance up your ass. <laughs> it might be time for Zoloft <laughs> first. Like, maybe just give Lexapro a try. <laughs> There's a bomb in his ass, and if his strokes drop below 55 miles an hour, it goes off. <laughs> <laughs> They should have made that porn parody. That would be good. <laughs> oh my god. Why in the world? Why in the world? Fire. In yep, that's our title this week. Reality Breaker has our title. <laughs> Fire in the Hole. That is our title. Yep. It's right. Of yeah. course it is. Of course it is. It's not what that means. <sighs> <laughs> the first thing we learn they make things to put in your butt and it's cool yeah. if you want to put the listen listen they make them that big if you want to put things in your butt it's okay totally That's cool put things in your butt but put the things we design we are a tool using species we have technology we have designed things purpose built for your butt and silicone feels remarkably similar to skin yeah, as we've learned, but put them in your butt. Not don't just random things. Use like, the what, right tool. For the job. Yeah, you you aren't an ape. Well, technically you are, <laughs> but but still, don't 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 be like you know, banging rocks together to form your own dildo. No, it, we make like, them. we're not here judging you for shoving something up your ass. Go crazy with shoving something up your ass. Just make it something designed. Use the right tool for the job. Wash it. And preferably not one that explodes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've learned that there are lots of ways to handle disputes with your neighbors, but fire isn't one of them. That's that. No one is going to be cool with that. No one is going to be like, oh, well, it's OK. He had a flamethrower, so I saw his point. Oh, man, I guess we can't park there anymore. We've learned you can't flag down a plane. They don't stop. They, they 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 just they just go. Um, we have learned down if you are inventing black people to get yourself out of trouble, you're probably going to be in more trouble. Also, just go to hell. Yeah, fuck you. Um, we've learned that if you're trying to fool healthcare professionals with plastic skin. You're kind of, you're double insulting them. You're like, they'll never figure this out. And you're, you're trying to just get around this. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Although when, uh, when they, they, I saw a news story saying they were going to start selling these things for the purpose of people trying to get out of the, out of the vaccinations with them. And I thought that's never going to work. And you know what? It did. It doesn't. And finally this week, but also, just get the fucking shot. And finally, this week, we've learned if you are attempting to drive animals from your home with fire, stop. You know what else fire will drive from your home? You. You, 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 you can't quite, you can't always do it yourself. If you can afford a $2 million house, you can afford animal control. 
Yeah. You can afford to call a guy who will get the snakes out in whatever manner. Like if you want to call an exterminator and kill them, that's on you. If you want to call somebody who will collect them up and bring them somewhere else. Like because it's it's something we have to worry we we have to worry about roaches here at the south. So I do call an exterminator and they come quarterly yeah. and they spray around our house and it's fine. I don't think to myself, you know, I'll just line the house with kerosene. Problem solved. Yeah. Sarah, can I line the house with kerosene? <laughs> no. What? Are you sure? Pretty sure. Pretty sure. 